A while back I produced a video on designing solar panels for a cruising sailboat and a number of you asked for an update on our experience with these panels while we've been underway. So I'm producing this video for you now. We've had uh, solar panels on our boat for three years now and uh, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on installing them and what to expect and how to get the most output from your solar panels on your cruising sailboat. So let's dive in. Hi, I'm Tom. And I'm Karen. Welcome to Life 4.0, where we share our adventures of life aboard our sailboat as we explore this amazing planet, one anchorage at a time. So we started with four uh, solar panels from a company called Fly Solar Tech, which is in Italy. And they have 135 watt peak output. And that was combined with a panel that came from the factory from Genoa, an 80 watt panel that was mounted on the deck. So the first challenge we had was the supporting those four panels that were mounted on the Bimini. Now, uh, flexible, these are flexible solar panels, so they're lighter weight than the rigid solar panels, but they do still have some weight to them. Well, each of the Fly Solar Tech panels weighs about seven pounds, and you need to plan for the weight of that on your Bimini. We had a uh, sailmaker install two battens that go uh, crosswise across our Bimini. And this is in addition to three tensioning struts that he installed on our Bimini between the two front bows of the Bimini. Now, we have a Genoa Sun Odyssey 440, three-year-old boat, 2018. And uh, we bought an aftermarket Bimini. Uh, it goes the full weight of the cockpit. So it's a lot of real estate up there. And that's great, but you also need to plan for the fact that even though these panels are lightweight, they're going to put some weight on your Bimini. So those two battens I mentioned really helped with that. They stiffened the fabric of the Bimini and allowed the Bimini to support that weight. Um, so that was the first challenge. Second challenge was the output from these flexible solar panels. Now you might have heard some other things on uh, people commenting about flexible solar panels and the output being less than they expected. And this is a reality, I can confirm that. Uh, again, the panels we had were 135 watts and I rarely saw more than 80 watts of output. That's like in the middle of the day when the sun's directly down on the panel so everything's optimized. My theory was, and I did talk to the manufacturer about this too, that they said that you need more airflow under those panels. And I did for a while insert kind of a plastic spacer down the middle of the panel uh, to try to get some airflow through there. I didn't really notice a whole lot of difference. Uh, these panels are solid black and they have a stiff aluminum metal backing plate to them, which makes them kind of semi-semi-flexible, not truly flexible. So I, my theory is that, that with that extra backing plate and the fact that they're straight down on the Bimini fabric, there's not a lot of cooling going on. And definitely solar panels will drop their output as they get hotter. We're boating in the Mediterranean right now, so it's very, very hot in the summer. Uh, and if you put something outside that's black, it's gonna get extremely hot. Another experience we had with those Fly Solar Tech panels is they started losing output through our first season. I did work with a manufacturer and they were under warranty. The manufacturer was very supportive and helpful. They sent us new panels and uh, that the new panels did help a lot. I did learn that um, you also, when you are working with the panels and if you're disconnecting anything during the day when they're putting out output, you want to cover those panels with a towel or a sheet or something like that so that their output goes down to zero before you disconnect them. Uh, one of the theories I have about why we had issues with our earlier panels was that I was changing things around and disconnecting them and checking charging levels and that was going on during the day so you have 80 watts of power coming out of a panel and then all of a sudden if you disconnect it there's no place for that output to go and that can surge the circuitry on the panels. Um, we also decided to have separate controllers for each panel now this is a big debate online and um, you can definitely uh, link your panels in series and uh, therefore have uh, one pair of wires coming down from your Bimini or solar arch or whatever and the one pair of wires can go to your controller. And indeed we used to have this on a previous boat of ours. We had a nice solar arch with 
um, no shading really possibility on there and two big panels and I ran it to one big controller. Um, this installation we decided to have separate controllers for each panel. The panels as I mentioned are on the Bimini and they um, can get some shading either from the boom or from the sail um, and different angles, slight angles during the morning and, and afternoon and we wanted to maximize the output of the solar so if you have a controller for each panel if that panel gets shaded the output of that panel drops but any other panels around um, they're on separate controllers and if they're in full sun no shading then you're getting full output from that the risk is if you put two panels in series and one of those panels is shaded you lose output for both panels so it's kind of a real bummer there um, now this involves more wiring um, we have separate pairs of wires coming down from each solar panel and they go down inside the boat right next to our battery bank and that's where I have my bank of controllers set up. Um, so a little bit more wiring, um, not really that much more expense frankly because the small controllers that are really designed for one panel are not that, that expensive and if you were to add up, you know, we have nine panels um, if you were to look at a controller size for all nine of those panels, uh, they're very expensive, the large controllers. So I wouldn't worry about the expense of that. It's more of the wiring that you need to kind of plan for. Um, for our flexible solar panels, I worked with a sail maker to put zippers on the sides of the long side of the panel and then zippers into our bimini. So there's different options for how you attach the panels to a bimini. Uh, I'm definitely biased towards the zippers. They have more contact. They don't go around all four sides, but they just they go down the two long sides of the panels, and that gives a lot of um, connection and uh, strength to the panel and the bimini. Uh, we've been in very high winds, 50 knots of wind, 60 knots of wind at times during thunderstorms, and those panels have held on to the bimini quite well. Now you can put snaps, or you can. Um, put zip ties or some people tie from grommets on the panels, tie them with line uh, to various parts of the bimini. That may work temporarily, but it's not really going to hold up for you in any kind of storm conditions. So I definitely recommend you to use zippers. Um, even better than that is to have your sailmaker put a little bit of cloth, extra cloth in the bimini that covers up those zippers but obviously it doesn't cover up the edge of the panel. Um, you want to cover up those zippers because the zippers can get uh, fatigued in uh, sun and UV damage from that. So talk to your sailmaker about designing that into the uh, bimini. So once we wired up the solar panels to each individual controller, I then um, took the output of the controllers and ran that output into the battery bank. Uh, we run the output into our house bank and uh, we have a device called a dual charger that then in turn charges up our engine bank and I have a 12 volt to 24 volt converter that then charges up our bow thruster bank. I will get more into that in a future video about how I set that up but you know you want to plan obviously on, on outputting the controller output to a breaker that then connects into your house battery bank. You also have the option to monitor the output of your solar panels. And for this, Victron provides uh, a couple good options for you. What we went with was a what's called a, a Victron color display. It shows you visually how much output you're getting from your total panels and from individual panels. In order to do this, you need to connect uh, a cable, uh, what's called a VE Direct cable underneath the underside of the controller and then run that to your uh, color control display from Victron. Uh, there's only two connectors for VE Direct and then there's two additional connectors for USB. So you can handle four controllers with that. Uh, the way you get around that for more panels is you put in a USB hub. And I've got a 10 port hub so I connect the remaining panels into that hub and I, you can do other things with the hub too. You can put a little GPS um, and Wi-Fi uh, connector on there to track your GPS location and also to use Wi-Fi with that color control. Lots of good options there. But that's something to consider. Um, it really helps you visually see what's going on with the output. You can, like I said, look at individual output of each panel and see if there's any issues you need to, to deal with. 
So that's the Victron color control display. Another nice thing to have while you're doing this is to install a battery monitor. And again, Victron has a great solution for that. It's called the BMV and uh, a couple different models of that. Uh, we have the model that manages the uh, one bank and then checks the voltage of a second bank. So we connect it up to the house bank. It shows you how many amps are going into the house bank and how many amps you're pulling out of the house bank. And it checks the voltage for that and also checks the voltage in a secondary battery which we connect up to our engine battery. That battery monitor is really, really helpful. Whether you go with solar or not, um, if you're managing power consumption and your, the life of your house bank and whether you need to charge it through a generator or through running your engine, the battery monitor, like one from Victron, will help you tremendously with that. It'll show you how much you've discharged your battery bank, for instance, overnight, and how close you are to getting back to a full charge. So that was the end of our uh, first sailing season. We got a lot of good output from our solar panels and our house bank was very happy from that. Now starting with our second season of sailing, uh, I added three more panels, this time from SunPower. They're 110 watt flexible panels. They're thinner and lighter than the Fly Solar Tech. They weigh about four and a half pounds each. And uh, I did this because of the reality of the fact that you're, you're losing output from your flexible panels. You're not getting the peak output uh, due, due likely to heat. Um, and I wanted to really maximize the real estate on our Bimini to try to get as much uh, solar output from that real estate as possible. So I worked with a sailmaker to <laughs> cut the, uh, the zippers where they had been zipped on and move the um, four panels I had further outboard to the farthest outboard point on the Bimini. And then that gave me room to put two more solar panels in the middle and still leaving a little bit of a gap for any shadow from the boom. Then I put the third sun power solar panel on the very aft part of the Bimini between two windows uh, for viewing the sail trim. And so I really have maxed out the space on the panel at this point. And that combined with the 80 watt panel that Juneau uh, installed on the deck uh, gives us about 950 watts of peak output. Again, you're not going to get to that peak output in my experience with flexible panels. Uh, you're going to want to probably plan on about 60% output. Now I also ran some new wiring for these panels. Uh, I upgraded some of the wiring and made better connections on the panels. Uh, I added MC4 connectors, which is a pretty standard solar panel connector. It's used a lot in residential installations, and they are waterproof. Uh, they're great connectors, so I substituted any other connectors that weren't that way to MC4s, and uh, on all the new panels are, are MC4 connectors. Um, in our instance, we were able to tuck the wires in the sleeve of where the bow connects to the bimini so that part of the connectors is out of the way but regardless if you happen to have them out in the open they are waterproof so you shouldn't have to worry about that regarding location of your solar panels you got a couple different options like i said we've put our solar panels on top of our bimini our previous boat had panels on top of a solar arch and then of course you can put uh, those flexible panels uh, and curve them and shape them around the deck of your boat. Now uh, we have one deck mounted panel and it really doesn't have a lot of output because it's in front of our dodger and it gets a lot of shade either from the dodger, from the boom, from the sail above the boom and uh, I've kind of discounted that panel as really not worth a whole lot uh, due to its location. So if you're going to go with deck mounted panels um, you're going to have to put up a lot of panels to try to get any kind of reasonable amount of output and you should just expect that you're going to get a lot of loss of output due to shading. Um, solar arch, great option. Um, it's usually, you know, it's by the nature of it, it's aft uh, on the boat, so it's usually out of the way of any kind of shading from the boom and most shading from any kind of sails. Um, we had great output from ours. You just have to go through the work of, you know, finding an arch that fits your boat or having somebody fabricate one for you and uh, the additional weight possibly. A lot of people combine an arch with uh, a dinghy davits, which is a good option. We were buying a brand new boat and we didn't really want to have the aesthetics of a whole big arch on the boat. So uh, that's why we went with this approach with uh, flexible panels on the Bimini. So I think it's a good compromise. You uh, don't have the weight of a whole arch and the rigid panels, 
uh, the flexible panels are lighter. You do have more shading though on the Bimini because of things going on uh, with sails and booms and such. Uh, and then the, of course the reality of the fact that the output is less on a flexible panel than a rigid panel. Um, but uh, we have an Arjuneau Sun Odyssey 44, has a 14 foot beam, so you end up with a lot of real estate and a lot of, uh, you know, basically a lot of space to put your flexible panels up there. So I would encourage you to look at flexible panels as a good option. Now, you know, the jury's still out about how long flexible panels last. Uh, undoubtedly, uh, rigid panels uh, last a good long time. If you buy them for a residential installation like we have at our home, you'll get a 25 to 30 year warranty, which is incredible. Uh, a lot of people feel like the flexible panels don't last as long. Certainly, if you buy panels that are, you know, cheaply made off of eBay, uh, you shouldn't expect to have them last more than a couple years. Uh, I'm certainly hoping that our panels will last long. SunPower is a very established company. SunPower makes actually a lot of the actual individual solar cells for uh, other manufacturers. And uh, we're, we've had very good output from them and have not noticed any kind of decreased output other than just sort of heat during the day. So that was our experience after three seasons of flexible solar panels. Since we recorded this solar update, we've had one more season of learning and I wanted to share with you two additional insights we've gained. The first is regarding our Fly Solar Tech panels. The leading edge of these four panels have started to delaminate slightly. This is likely due to poor weatherproofing of the multiple substrate layers. We are beyond the warranty period, so I have made a repair on my own by injecting epoxy into the loose layers. So far, no water has intruded into the actual silicon cells itself, but due to the thin nature of flexible panels, it is worth it for you to keep an eye out for this issue. Thankfully, our sun power panels have shown zero sign of delamination. The second change we have made is to sew the zippered sides of the panels into a dedicated Sumbrella fabric layer for the panels, which is in turn zippered into the main Bimini fabric. In effect, the solar panels now attach to one layer of fabric which is then attached to the Bimini fabric. The purpose of this is to allow us to more easily change solar panel sizes and layout without putting more holes or stress into the main Bimini fabric. We are very happy with the solution. So that concludes our video on installing and working with solar panels. This is what we've learned and experienced. Uh, your experience may be different. I would encourage you to comment on our, on our video. Um, and I would encourage you to look at flexible solar panels. I think they're a good compromise uh, from using a stern arch and the effort to, to have a stern arch installed and maintained and the aesthetics uh, impact on your boat. Uh, so good luck. I hope you got something out of this video. We always look forward to your feedback. Finally, if you are interested in solar power at your home or business, be sure to check out my seven-part series on designing and building a land-based 10-kilowatt solar array. Fair winds. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe to our channel and click on the bell to get notified of new videos.